Hey guys, it's Carissa, of course your host of On the Journey with Carissa and Friends. And today is a very special treat for me because I am here with not just one friend, but two friends. And this is the first time that I've been able to do this with more than one person. And it's a delight for me because, first of all, good luck to the listeners because we're all, <laughs> it, this, we get really excited about the topic we're going to be talking about today. But to begin with, and I'm going to go into detail and in introductions in a minute because both of, both of these ladies are names that you have heard and their voices that you are very familiar with. But to begin, I have to start with a story because the first guest that I'm going to introduce to you is my friend Shelly Chandler. Hi, Shelly. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I was actually just telling them how precious it is because my sweet daughter at this point, knows what I do for ministry, and I have a tendency to post things on social media to let everybody know what's going on, and just to share, and some of Ella's friends, she's in middle school, and a lot of her friends follow me on Instagram, and I always post on Instagram what's going on in my life, and so because of the regularity of your appearances <laughs> on the podcast at this point, there is a new... Um, greeting, I guess is a good way to put it, hashtag. that my daughter gets and needs to be the hashtag for this podcast. <laughs> and when her friends see her, they say, Shelly's on the podcast. <laughs> I can't even. I'm literally dying. Because literally dying. they pulled up my Instagram and the first thing they saw a long time ago was, Shelly's on the podcast today. <laughs> And so her friend at the time said, hey, Ella, did you know Shelly's on the podcast? And so now it's a thing. It's a thing. And I'm just so thankful that your daughter doesn't hate me because that is so embarrassing, I think. Well, what's awesome is today, this morning, I was taking her to school and she was asking me about my day. And I said, well... Shelly's coming up because she told me when she came home a couple of times, she's like, Mom, is Shelly on the podcast? Oh anytime God. she knew, anytime she knew. And so today it was hilarious because, uh, and I even giggled telling her that um, she asked me what I was doing. I said, well, Miss Shelly's coming over. And she said, oh, I got to tell everybody Shelly's on the podcast. <laughs> you tell Miss Ella Claire that we will take a picture together and we'll do something silly with to post to that post Shelly's, on, Shelly's on the podcast. And we, this is, to, well, we've decided this is going to be our merch. Okay. Like, it's we our hashtag. Hat. And I our, need a hat. And our I'm, merch. I'm, wearing a hat. I'm literally dying, dying right now. And the reason why I love it so much is because it really is evidence that we are friends, yes. not just ministry partners, yes. that if my kids know your name that well, so and it's sweet. not just yours, there's yeah. so many other women that I am very like do daily life with alongside ministry that they know their names mm -hmm. and it warms my heart that they're watching friendship play out among women who also do ministry work together. Yeah. And that's, in fact, what our topic is today is friendship among women. And then also some of what we go through working together in ministry together, <laughs> yeah. the good, the, the great and the messy and yeah. all in between. Yeah. And Deb, the thing that I love about you, my sweet friend, Deb Rice, which is very familiar. I've had some really tough, we've been the hard yes. topics, haven't we? We hit hard. Yeah. Yeah. Go back and listen to any one of mine with Deb and you'll see why we say that. Um, we've hit some pretty intense mm -hmm. topics and, but what is so sweet is that I have a story with your daughter yes. that is so precious to me that I would love for you to share because this is just one more aspect of what friends do for yes. one another. Yes. Barbies is all um, I need to say. I will I've, play Barbies anytime. Chris is a Barbie girl yes, in a Barbie world. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> anytime. <laughs> And see, right now, I feel like I could exit because... You're a boy, Mom! I just, you wouldn't understand. No, I'm literally watching in fascination as this story unfolds. I'm like, what? Barbies? What? What are Barbies? No, Do they I have know, wheels and go room? I think what? the next time we podcast, 
we should bring Barbies. Yes. Oh my like, word. we should. I need Barbie. that. Yes, you do. Yes. You don't get I that. that moment. No, I do. I really you do. Don't. I'm serious. You don't get that, do if you? it hasn't blown up, <laughs> so it doesn't exist at my house. Boy mom versus girl mom's going on right here. Totally. Oh well, word. I had the privilege yes. of hanging out with Aria. Not great circumstances, but no. it really was a privilege yeah, for me. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, it was, I mean, a blessing, too, because mm. our poor little girl, it She's five, and she has had more medical struggles than any five-year-old should. And um, one of her hospital stays this past year, uh, she had her appendix out in March unexpectedly. And we couldn't be discharged because no one would let her. I mean, she would not let anyone feed her or give her a drink or anything. Like, would not take anything. And Chris decided to come visit us and see what she could do. And... Carissa got all in with the Barbies. Yes. I mean, she full size, like paper Barbie doll with outfits. And I mean, like, you could change like, the outfits. Change it was a magnet. All the, a magnet paper doll. thing. And you could nice. change. It was amazing. And so Aria would get a new outfit every time that she drank. Carissa would dress the doll and even yes. pick accessories and, like, oh, there's a set. Oh, there's a cute handbag. So oh, every like, time she mm-hmm. ate or drank, she got to dress Barbie, and so yes. we would talk about what outfit should she have on, and where yes. is she going, and what is she doing, and so then when it was time to change, well, we had to have another sip, and then we would change an outfit, and she was in, too. Oh, she was yeah. all in. Like, we actually were able to get out finally the next day, and yeah. but even yesterday, like, we went to Children's, because we spend way too much time at Children's, Yeah, and we were heading home, and I had Chris on the on the phone through the car and we were kind of collaborating yeah and she hears Carissa's voice and she's like Carissa and she and she's got this really cute little voice and she talked me into McDonald's Happy Meal to get a Barbie because because of the Barbie because (laughs) Carissa was on the phone and we need a Barbie at McDonald's and I'm working for the girl too (laughs) because I'm like yes my girl needs a Barbie Yeah. yeah So, yeah, that's awesome. and what's so neat about that too that I had I don't think I've even told you, but what's crazy is that I went in and saw you walk through that and and saw her struggle, and then four months later, Your son. my son had his mm-hmm. appendix out yeah. and, a, and an emergency mm-hmm. appendectomy, and struggled eating, which yeah. I knew to expect because of what I'd watched you walk through right. with her, mm-hmm. and I knew how to incentivize him in a way that I I never would have thought of otherwise because of walking through that with you right and so it really prepared me in a way that I would not have otherwise been prepared to do because I had watched you go through it before Mm -hmm. and I tell you that is what I love about the way God puts together relationships that are actual real genuine friendships yes and it's 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 relationships that number one are willing to show up Mm -hmm. number two are willing to learn Mm -hmm. And number three, are willing to grow together Mm -hmm. to become better versions of ourselves. And that's what God wants for us, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. So I just kind of want to start by, for each of you to even kind of give a little background about your personal experiences with just friendships. Um, What do you, how would you describe friendship to yourself? Like, what does that mean to you? And then what's your experience been over these past few years? Just even from childhood, has it been hard? Has it been easy? What does that look like for you? Shelly, we'll start with you. I just, I love that we've been talking about this and just, I think the three of us have a common theme that friendship has been difficult. And I think um, anybody that's listening, I, I have a feeling you're raising your hand in solidarity and saying, yeah, that, that's that been me too. Friendships are hard. It's not an easy thing. And I think the reason behind that is because friendships are a gift, Mm -hmm. a gift that God has given us. Mm -hmm. And anything that our enemy can do to to thwart that, to make that uh, relationship difficult, he's going to find a way to do that. And especially when you're younger, you don't really have all the tools yet that you need to help develop healthy relationships. And so some of the time, some of the reasons when you're younger and you, you don't have these relationships that quite work out that then bleeds into your adult relationships. And then you yes. set patterns and just difficulties. So for me, I, I had I struggled. I struggled most of my life um, having good female friendships. I would have, you know, wouldn't have difficulty having uh, friendships 
with other um, guys. Mm -hmm. So they were, some of them were my best friends growing up. But for some reason, when it came to the other women, the other girls growing up, there was just this edge of of competi- uh, being competitive, mm-hmm. maybe some jealousy. And I'm not saying just yeah. on their end. Right. You know, yes. I, I have no doubt that I played a role in that yes. as well. Um, you know, and just, I don't know, that navigating those difficult waters was hard for me. Well, do you think we're taught that? I, and we can speak to that, gosh. Deb. I know that you can speak to that too because you have kind of a different, a similar experience, mm-hmm. but it comes from a different place. But I'm mm-hmm. wondering, are we taught to, to compete with each other? I don't know by if, culture or if it's is it just, innate in us? Yeah, I don't know if it's just media driven. Is or, it sin? Uh, it's definitely. <laughs> sin. I think right? it's identity driven. Yeah, it's yeah. your worth. Mm. Like your worth is found in being that step above. For That's most good. of us, because yeah. we miss our worth strictly in Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Mm. And so, when especially in young years. Yes. Well, and I can't contest to that one at all. I can only talk about. Yeah, adult you're, you're from a very different perspective. Yes. Yeah, because I, I didn't have a faith as a, a young. I mean, I've had a faith now for eight years. Mm-hmm. So you grew up in a completely secular system of yes, a, a, a secular mm-hmm. worldview. Yes. Right? Which I think for us, you know, you and I were saved at very young ages. We were brought up in the Bible Belt. We were brought up in church, and I do know that there is nothing that brings glory to God more then people bonded together in unity yes, in his name. It's it's what he told the disciples. They will know me by your love for each other yeah, for a reason, right? right? That's yes. how Jesus is seen is by our love for one another. And your worldview is a little bit different it is. because that's not, you were grew up in Bo- Boston, right? Yes. And I know you moved around a little bit, but started in Boston. Not Boston a, until 20. Yeah. So, I mean, that was my growing years, yeah. like my yeah. developmental yeah. years. Boys. And you gravitated yeah. towards boys too. My best friends were boys, so my two best friends dressed me for my wedding day, and they were guys. Oh, wow. I mean, they stood next to me at the altar. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that's how much my friendship way had gone towards male figures. And, I mean, one of them, he's still my best friend, and we've been friends. Actually, my son was asking me the other day because we've been friends since we were one. Wow. Yeah. So do you think... Did you try to have friends that were girls? Do you think it's what we were talking about, I the did. competition the and the jealousy? The thing is, it was always, and I, and I know we've had these conversations even before we mm-hmm. started podcasting, but it's, you know, that, you know, that who we are and the identity of, like, even when you get into Enneagram numbers and, like, yeah. what. It's my favorite topic. Yes. It always comes <laughs> off on the podcast. Yes. Everybody who knows me in this podcast <laughs> knows that I love but, it. I mean, when you talk about that, like, it makes you wonder, and I know with, you know, I was even talking to my mom this morning that friendships, even from my adolescent years, like mm-hmm. sixth, seventh grade, I remember those being the worst years of my yeah. life. And I remember friendships, I, and it falls into expectations too, which mm-hmm. I think plays a lot of role in friendships that all of us have. I agree. But I had these expectations of this, of these friendships and they weren't that. Yeah. And they were a lot more manipulative than my heart could handle. And even not being a Christian, compassion has always been a huge Mm -hmm. part of my personality. And so Christian or not, I had my heart on my sleeve. And when you have your heart on your sleeve there for the taking, when it gets stomped on, you're done. That's (laughs) right. Like, I think, and that's one thing I really wanted us to talk about because I've heard both of you say, I can be done. Oh, totally. Yeah. That we kind of learn, if you hurt me, you're out. Yeah. And I'm yeah. the same way. I mean, that's a, I'm a, you're a three, Enneagram three, Shelly. Yes. We believe that you're a four. Yes. I, I would bank on the fact that you're a four, Deb, and I'm an eight. And we all personally have a lot of, um, there's qualities about us that can be tough, right? Yeah. yeah. You like to be the individual. You like mm-hmm. to be um, unique in your own way. Yeah. And and not boxed in and not defined in any certain terms, but kind of create who you are on your own. And Shelly, you like to be, you're very goal-driven. Yes. You are very ambitious. And you like to be able to accomplish what it is that you set out to accomplish. Right. I was the one that was writing the outline for the podcast. <laughs> 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 
And then I'm the one who says, you're not the boss of me. That's don't don't right. outline my podcast. <laughs> that's my best thing that's happened today. <laughs> because I just don't like to have somebody tell me this is what I have to do. Right? right? Welcome is, to her age. Yes, yes. <laughs> and don't I can be her. adaptable. <laughs> I'll come to the conclusion and I'll listen. But it's taken me a long time to get there. <laughs> and so each of us have these qualities that we're bringing to the table. Right. And some and, and aspects of those, I know for me, I could cut people out and not think yeah. again about it. Yeah. And that's not healthy. Yeah. See, I would think about it. Oh, you would? I would. Like, that's the way my brain goes, is I can't, I can't let it go that easily. Like, I care too much about people that I carry that baggage with me. Mm. But then you add that baggage, and then you add the next yeah. bag, and then you carry the next bag. And, and that's then, why you finally just walked away all Well, together. and then you're just, you're just broken. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're literally a broken mess, and then you have trust issues. Yes. Because then how do you trust the next friend right. that walks in your door? Yes. And so now your barriers are up and your walls are everywhere and you're saying, no, like you're not coming this far. You can get that far, but like there's no wall. So would you say that for Mm -hmm. us speaking now, the key to a good friendship would be first and foremost to look at what you're bringing to the table, your baggage, the way you handle hurt, the way you handle pain. Absolutely. Yes. If you can understand yourself, you will understand the way you react to everyone else and then you have grace not only for them but for yourself as well and realizing hey I may be responding this way because this is who I am inherently and whether that be for the good or for the bad and I mean for us if we can understand where our our I hate to say this word, but I'm just going to say it, where our weaknesses are. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. our d- deficiencies. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's just be honest. Sure, we, we have we, strengths and weaknesses. We all have those things. We, we need to acknowledge that. If, but if we can recognize where those are and understand, hey, this is where maybe I'm a little bit more vulnerable. Yes. And maybe this person is a little bit more vulnerable in this yes. area. That just gives grace to the relationship. It allows that relationship to have room to breathe where it doesn't have to be so cut and dry. Mm -hmm. Whether if you do this to me, I cut you, you're out, you know, and there's no second chance here because I'm, I'm really, that's, that's my, at my worst, that is where I tend to go. I tend to go like, I don't want to mess with you. You're too much trouble. You're too much drama. I've got enough going on in my life. You're too much work for me, yeah. and I'll just move on. Yeah, and I wish I could say <laughs> I was like Deb, and I felt bad about it. Yeah, but I don't. No. I'm just like I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't have the emotional space for yeah. you. <laughs> right, right. And it's it's that's not honestly, and because I'm the same, and I have I had to actively practice two things me to too. have successful relationships. The first one is vulnerability, yes. and the second one is mercy. Mm-hmm. And that's the two things that, honestly, through my entire adult life, my entire adult life, that's made or, bra- my, made or broken my relationships. Mm-hmm. And it's usually, it, it really doesn't have anything to do with the other person. It really mm-hmm. is about me. And when I can come to a place where I can be vulnerable with my friend, mm-hmm. selectively, yes, but with my friend... And when I can have mercy, then that friendship will most likely turn out to be a a great one. A great one. Well, and especially when even, because you know what, we're human. And so we're going to still screw up. Even when we put those parameters in place Mm -hmm. and we, we work on those blind spots that you know, we're trying to make our relationships better, we're still going to screw up. Yes. So it's being able to also have healthy conversations. Yes, and this, girl. This is really like one of the big things. This that is we're, your this, jam. This is my jam right here. It's <laughs> like conversations yeah. and being able to constructively say, this is where I'm at. This is how I'm feeling. This is what we need to do. And, and hear the other person. And I was just talking about this earlier is like, Hear in order to hear. Do not hear to respond. Oh, yes. yes. Like That's listening. Yeah. Hear to hear, not hear to respond. Absolutely. I mean, we all need to hear that like a hundred times a day because we all just want to respond. Yeah. We don't want to hear. And especially if it's about ourselves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like especially. But yeah. we need to hear that because we're not going to be better. If we're not willing to do that work, and that's an area of Carissa, is yes. like we've we got all to have do the blind work. spots, yes. right? You're full, ladies, men. <laughs> Whoever I'm you just going to take a minute 
everybody has blind spots. Yes. Yes. Everybody has blind yes. spots. And if you think the, even the <clears throat> most self-aware person on the planet has blind spots because of sin. Because yes. we are fallen. We are not in our perfected bodies yet. And by definition, not perfected bodies mean that we are imperfect. Yes. Right? Yeah. And the more, I mean, that has been the process for me personally is to be okay with being imperfect yeah. and to be okay with having somebody come to me because if I'm driven by anything, it's approval. Mm, yeah. If I'm driven by anything, it's please, please approve of me. Mm. Please say that you like me. Please tell me that I'm good enough for you. And when we're all, and all of us are bringing this to the table, mm-hmm. all of us, we're living in a world that's broken. Well, we're living in a world where you can watch it all the time on social media. Yes. What mm. these personality traits supposedly are, because we're betraying one in another world versus what, it's might true. actually be what's yeah. reality yeah and yeah. so it's easier to fake it now yeah. of yeah. like what you're bringing to the table yeah oh my goodness I yes <laughs> yep so how does this navigate into ministry because there's a difference between friendship and ministry but what I'm finding with with women's ministry is we and this is a different conversation but this is the segue we don't have as many opportunities in the church to perform our giftings, Mm -hmm. right? We're we're more limited on how we can express our ministry callings. And so a lot of us have to go outside of the church still with a covering of church. We're all still in church. We're all still invested in serving in our church, but all three of us have ministries outside of the Mm -hmm. church because we have giftings that we want to exercise that, the outside, the church atmosphere is a better fit for us to exercise those giftings. And so the result of that is we can't do this thing alone. Yes. And so we're we're finding ourselves joining together with other women. And yes. that's one thing my journey of faith is all about. It's it's creating a platform for women to be able to use the giftings that they can't otherwise find areas to use them in. We want to be a platform to use your call. We want to send you out and let you use your calling and promote you and encourage you. And so that's why we're sitting together right now. We want to unify. Yes. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Okay. So what does that look like when you bring a friendship that, that, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a reason why we struggle when we're a kid, right? We aren't, we don't have the capacity for self-awareness when we're kids, right? It's difficult. And when we're grown ups, and you spoke to this, we try really hard, yeah. right? But the thing about ministry, mm. it gets to you. Yeah, it does. It's difficult. Um, I don't know that I have a good word for that. I know just my personal experience this year, and I just want to just be so very honest. Um, I feel like God, just this past year, has gifted me with friends. Mm. I feel like God has given me special people in my life that he, it's it's like he's dropped them in my lap that's such a blessing and it's just it i mean i'm just i'm very emotional mm-hmm. about it just talking about it but i feel like he's given me you carissa and he's recently given me you deb and i could just i could mm-hmm. list people right now that i know that if it were not for god i would not have these people in my life yeah and he's given them to me as just these special gifts. And not only are we friends, but we get to do this extra thing Mm. where we do ministry together. And God did that. He did that on purpose. Not only did he give me people that I can do life with, but he gave me people that I can do ministry life with. Mm. And I know it's not just for my own personal enjoyment. I know he's given that to me because he has a purpose behind that mm-hmm. as well. And when we join together and we practice healthy friendships yeah. and they bleed into our ministry, it's one of those things that God intended from the very beginning. Yeah. He intended for, just like what Deb said, he intended for this unity. Because when we practice this unity, when the world sees us practicing healthy friendships, unity within ministry, then the world sees him. And that is the whole point. That's the goal behind it all. It is. And I I can't help but think about the disciples because we know that, like we said before, Jesus told the disciples, they will know my love for the the world will know me by the way you love each other. And one of the conversations the disciples had right before Jesus went to the cross was, who's the best? 
this, there's somebody in there who's was a three. Let's just best. be honest. Whoever said that, they were a three. That I mean, probably <laughs> Peter. I don't know. He was too impulsive, but totally. I think John right. was a four. <laughs> <laughs> he was the hey. disciple Jesus loved. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. But I will say, isn't it interesting that mm-hmm. the closing prayer that Jesus prayed, and you found this in John 17, right. was for what? Unity. 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 Jesus prayed over not just the disciples, but the ones who believed in him because of the disciples, that we would be one. Yes. As he is one in the Father. Yes. And we are in him, that we will be one. Absolutely. And that's the blend where friendship and ministry meet. Where friendship and ministry meet. And I will ask, what's that been like for you? Have you felt... The pull of competition or the pull of comparison. And if you have, where do you see that taking place, that tempt to go there? Mm-hmm. And we've done we've done work on ourselves mm-hmm. enough to, we're pretty self-aware girls because we <laughs> have needed to be to survive, right? Yes. We've been through our own mess. Mm-hmm. It's been, we all have pretty significant trauma stories where we've had to do a lot of work. Yes. Um, and so I feel like we're pretty self-aware. I, I really do stumble a lot in this area, mm-hmm. the area of really more comparison mm-hmm. than um, competition. And I don't think it's, do you think that's the same? It is for me. I don't know. Comparison and competition is the same. Well, for me, and I, I'm always, I'm always hardest on myself. It's yeah. never really, I don't ever look at somebody else and think, negative towards them I look at what they've accomplished yeah and I look at negative towards myself and you think why haven't I accomplished right that? Yeah. What, where where have I misstepped Lord sure. have I done something wrong Lord you know did I not I'm just so difficult on myself I call myself mm-hmm. a striver and yeah. I know that's part of being a three it is um but yeah. if, if Lord if I just do this one next thing mm-hmm. would that be what it took and so I really have to be self-aware first of all recognize that I'm doing that and then step back but yes, for me, making sure that I'm not comparing myself is a huge goal for me. And what helps is when we go back and look at this verse. Yeah. Because it's not talking about Shelley as the individual. Sure. It's talking about the body of believers right. as one. And when you know the end game, when you know the end goal, for me, that helps to avoid that comparison, that competitive, that competitive nature that I know is within me. Um, when I know what the end game is, and the mm-hmm. end game is not me, the end game is yes. him, and will always be him. So that's what you and I have talked about for the past two days. Yeah, really is what's the what is what your is, heart purpose? Right, and and allowing God to check that every day. Yeah. Like that's been my mornings lately. Yeah. Is Lord check my motives? Lord check where my heart is in whatever mission field I'm in right now, because that will drive where we're actually supposed to be working for his kingdom and where we're working in our flesh. Amen. And that's going to change the dynamic of what's going to happen depending which which face we have on. Because really, like, we can choose which mask to wear every Absolutely. day. We can wear our flesh mask or we can say, Lord, this is who you spirit. are calling yeah. to be in me. Yeah. And so I think that's a really strong way to start our mornings is doing that check with ourselves of what are our intentions for this day and where is my heart in this? How quickly friendship turns into what the other person should do. Yes. Right? The that it's fingers. about the other person. Yes. But <laughs> real genuine friendship and ministry work. Yes. yes. Is about us. It's about yes. what we're where we're at, what we're doing, what we Now, all this to preface, and we have a few more minutes with our our time together, we're going to get hurt, right? Oh, totally. All the time. Almost every day. (laughs) Let's be real. It hurts. It it hurts. And it's it's not not because God is not good or that ministry is not good. It's because people are broken. Right. Yes. Oh, please hear that if you hear nothing else. Because I know how easy it is to want to throw the towel in and say, I'm giving up on friendships. I'm giving up on ministry. I'm giving up on the Lord. I'm giving up on it all. But it, it really, you have to step outside of yourself and realize not only are you broken, but everyone around you is also broken. And God is still good. Yes. And he will be good no matter what is going on. So don't give up. Don't give up on that. And I love what you said earlier. I think that we have to remember that we are we are here and we are given purpose and we are given value 
by God and God alone. Yeah. Yes. And it's nobody else. Nobody else. And and even to continue on what Shelly just said, like we've got to remember those key things that the Lord gave us also as gifts yeah. of mercy and grace. And like, so when we're looking at everyone's flaws and their blind spots that they might not even be aware of, we have got to be carrying our bag of grace and mercy with us if we want to love as Christ loved us. That's right. And that's where like, I think the rule of treat others the way you would want to be treated is critical to good relationships. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not by accident that our key verses encourage one another daily as long as it's called today because it is through encouraging each other before we point fingers or get angry or get upset. If our main goal is encouraging each other in Jesus' name to keep fighting this fight because that's how we're going to get through this life, I think that we can bring the body of Christ together in a way that is just so precious and so united. Yes. It's got to be a heart for God first and then to encourage and, and motivate each other towards victory second mm-hmm. so love one another yes love one yes. another yeah. thank you thank you thank girls. you yes. thank y'all thank you for being my friends and thank you for being here shell is on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> and so is my barbie girl's mama deb shelly yes. thank you again um y'all be sure to check us out on our website myjourneyoffaith.com and you can find each one of them on their socials uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Shattered Number Four Glory. Deb Rice. Or Shattered for Glory on Facebook. Okay. And I'm Go Three Ministries, Shelly Chandler. You can find me there on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And I'll create links for both of those too. You, I mean, Shelly's on the podcast on the regular. <laughs> and now Deb Rice is. So you can find her if you just go to At My Journey of Faith Ministries. <laughs> Thank y'all. And guys, please join us again. Shelly's going to be back on the podcast (laughs) next week and we're digging into fear. So don't miss it.